Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last thing before I forget, we are certainly celebrating with our uh, Shiloh Abundant Life Center Atlanta today as um, they are, we, we are celebrating uh, three years um, in our uh, Atlanta location. Uh, matter of fact, we're celebrating this whole month basically. And we are certainly thanking God for the vision and the visionary, Bishop Donnell Leach and Pastor Anita. We're certainly praying for you. We're certainly praying for Pastor Daryl and Elder Tracy and all of you that are connected with us. Hallelujah. We celebrate these three years and uh, God, I tell you, the best is still yet to come. Amen. Hallelujah. No, no matter what the enemy has uh, tried to do and tried to um, unleash, we win. We win. Just say it to yourself, I win. Glory to God, I win. Mm. No matter what others say, no matter what the enemy tries to do, I'm going to win. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. I want to um, go to um, a very intriguing passage that is in the book of 2 Kings, chapter number 7. The book of Second uh, Kings, chapter number seven, and uh, we're going to look at a few verses there. I'm going to be reading today from the Message Bible, Second Kings, chapter number seven, uh, verses three and four. There uh, in this passage, Amen. Second Kings, chapter number seven, verses three and four, and uh, it says in the Message version, it happened that four lepers were sitting just outside of the city gate. And they said to one another, what are we doing sitting here at death's door? If we enter the famine-struck city, we'll die. If we stay here, we'll die. <laughs> so let's take our chances in the camp of Aram and throw ourselves on their mercy. If they receive us, we'll live. <laughs> if they kill us, we die. We've got nothing to lose. <laughs> wow. What an intriguing passage. I want to lift up uh, this, uh, these verses here from this passage. Um, just look at one person and say, neighbor, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. oh neighbor, I got some good news for you. This is your time, is your time to, rise up. to rise up. This is your time to rise up. I don't know where you are right now at this very moment in your life, but this is your time to rise up. This passage, it, re it reveals a very interesting plight of uh, four lepers. They found themselves um, isolated from uh, the Israelites, which was the custom for any persons who, uh, who had became leprous. They had to be isolated from the people of God and the, uh, the area, wherever, uh, if, if they found themselves st struck with this uh, disease. They had to be isolated. So they found themselves isolated from the people of God. Their situation, boy, it was, it was terrible. As it says here in the text, we stay here, we'll die. If we go there, we might die. We might as well take a chance. I, and and, and, and for, so for some of you who have um, come today, this is your chance to rise up. This is your chance to make a difference in your life. I don't know what path you have been going down, but I tell you, this is your day to do something different. But the, the, the situation was, 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 was so difficult. They, they didn't have no food. They didn't have no water, and you need water. But they decided to get up from where they were. It is interesting. They decided to move from a place of isolation and try to find some substance so they could live. And you know, 
We need the word of, Lord, of the Lord so we can live. The word of God is life, and it gives us life. And um, they, they decided, they said, you know, we're just going to take a risk. We got to get up out of here. We, we, one way, once, we got to do something. And it comes a time in your life where you become desperate. And you just, boy, you get tired of sick and tired of being sick and tired. I got to change my life. I got to do something different. Well, the good news is today, the word of the Lord for you is just your time to rise up. Glory to God. I got three observations I'm going to share. I'm going to try not to preach too long, but I'm going to give you what the word of the Lord says and he has given to me. The first observation that I want to make today is that we must learn how to make God-led decisions. We must learn how to make God-led decisions. Well, what is that? I believe when you look at what a God-led decision is, it is a decision that will literally allow you to live. A God-led decision is a decision that will lead you to live. And as these lepers, as they got up from where they were, as they made a decision to get up from a very dire and dark and bleak situation, they made a decision that, boy, we got to move. Yeah, we got leprosy, but I, they made a decision that they weren't going to, they weren't going to die where, where they were. And there comes a time in life, sometimes it seems like, boy, there, there, there's walls closing in on the front, walls closing in in the back, walls closing in on both sides. But what do you do when you come to those types of situations? You find a way, sometimes you got to find your way through a crack. <laughs> did y'all just see what I just did? There's always a way out. And, but, you, but the thing is, you got to listen for the voice of God in every aspect of your life. You have to learn how to let God let, live a life and make God-led decisions that will force you to act. A God-led decision will force you to act. It will make you get up from where you are. It will make you change the course and the, traje the trajectory of your life. A God-led decision will force you to come out of a place of isolation. And that's what the enemy tries to do. He tries to keep you weighed down. He tries to keep his foot on you. He tries to keep you where you are so that you can't get to the place of life. And for many, you've isolated yourselves because, because of the, uh, I'm going to use a big word, the vicissitudes of life. <laughs> Y'all know I got to use one, at least one big word. <laughs> you, you, because of the vicissitudes, the, the, the multiplicity of things, issues. And the, and the thing is, we all got some issues. We might not talk about it a lot. We might not uh, 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 tell and share everything that we're going through. And, and it's important to find at least, and I'll say this, it's important to find at least one person, at least one person who is spiritual, who, who you can talk to. Yes, you got to talk to the Lord. Matter of fact, that, that's the number one thing. But sometimes we need a person that we, that we can touch, yeah. somebody that we can feel, somebody here in the earth that, that you know who can get a prayer through. Yeah. And I thank God for, for surrounding me with people who can pray. Yeah. People who can pray. We, we might not agree on maybe sometimes the all, 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 of, uh, 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 all of whatever, but I tell you one thing, I got some praying people around me. Yeah. And I, I encourage you to find somebody, somebody's who you can uh, lean on. Yeah, we can lean on the Lord. Yes, we do. And we need to lean on the Lord. But sometimes we need somebody here on the earth. Hallelujah. That can help us. That can pray with us. And sometimes pray for us. Glory to God. Make God-led decisions. And you know what a God-led decision will do? It, what it will do, it will cancel out the negative effects of our bad choices. When we make a decision, when we make a God-led decision, it will cancel out the negative 
<laughs> effects of a bad choice. And so that means that you've actually made a bad decision. But God's grace and God's mercy, it allows you to make a 180 <laughs> and go in a different direction. And as a matter of fact, go in the way that God may be trying to get you to go. And for some, God is trying to literally get you to make a turn of a 180 to change your life, the course of your life. And the interesting thing is, the very interesting thing is, sometimes we don't realize the choice that we make also will have effects on those who are connected to us. Some of our children, our family members, our aunts and uncles, we don't know the decision that you make may be a life altering decision. So that means we all must learn how to lead, uh, uh, make God-led decisions. The second observation that, uh, uh, that I'm drawing from this text is that don't you know that God is able to remove obstacles and hindrances from your life? Do you really believe that? God is able to remove obstacles and hindrances from your life. Here it is, these, these, these lepers in a bad situation, they were basically, again, just, just, just in a, just a tough spot. And um, here, here it is, uh, they, they, they said, we, we got to make a decision. We, 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 got, to, we got to do something here. We, we got to go. And what they did not realize, God was literally orchestrating their future. He was orchestrating their healing as they were struck with leprosy, God was literally orchestrating their healing process. He was leading them to a place where they could find, find some substance, where they could find food and water. And this passage, it revealed to me that the ability of God, it always transcend, transcends our trouble. The ability of God, it always transcends our trouble. What, I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, what do I mean by that is, I don't care how deep in trouble you are. <laughs> I don't care the, uh, uh, um, the mistakes that you've made, um, how tight the walls are feeling. God's power. God's ability always transcends or transcends our trouble. And what that literally means, he will find you where you are. I know you're writing. And what he will literally do, put your Bible down for just one second, and then you can pick it back up. Say, what he will literally do, he will, he will take his right hand, and his right hand symbolizes power. I'm going to talk about God's left hand too in a minute. But his right hand will come down. It transcends our trouble. That means it's above what we're going through. But his right hand will literally come down. He will pull us up out of our trouble. And then he will lead us to where we need to go. And he will sit us down in a new place, in a high place, in a place of sustenance, a place that fulfills our needs. Glory to God. Is, has God done that for anybody? You can go back to your seat. <laughs> but that's what God's right hand would do. That, that right hand, it symbolizes power. Hallelujah. And authority. He has, a, he, he has authority over all your troubles. So when you get into trouble, when you get into a tight spot, ooh, look for God's right hand to show up right where you are. Hallelujah to God. God responded to their need with action. He literally removed the obstacle. He responded to the need. He supplied their need in their time of distress. And what God did, the text says that God literally confused the enemy. And what, he, and what God did, you go back and look at the text, what God literally, literally did, there was a supernatural sound that was released in the earth. And the sound confused the enemy. The enemy thought that it was horses and chariots and it was an army that was coming against them. And what they did, they jumped up and left where they were. 
And here it is, these people, his people, even though they had leprosy, they were still God's people. <laughs> and God made a way, literally made a way out of no way. I don't care how much trouble you are in, what may look like the ugliest of ugliest of trouble, confusion, negativity, whatever, God will confuse the enemy on your behalf. God will send us, he will send a supernatural tremor through the earth. My God, God will touch the heart of your enemies. And he will make your enemies begin to bless you. I, I, I've seen him do it. <laughs> I've seen him. I've seen, and I think I got a few more people in here that have seen God's hand. He's coming and changed. He's changed the situation for your behalf because you are righteous. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He always looks out for us, right? That's why you got to maintain your connection with God. You got to maintain your relationship with God. Hallelujah. So when you call on the name of the Lord, he'll hasten to you. Hallelujah. That means he'll come quickly. Glory to God. He'll show up right on time. Yes, he will. Glory to God. What seemed, what seemed like a dead-end situation to these lepers, it was an opportunity to advance. And I believe as we are getting and coming into this last quarter of 2018, it's a year of new beginnings. It's a year that God is rearranging some things for the lives, lives of many of his people. It is an opportunity to advance. And I don't know, sometimes we get, we get a little nervous about change. As a matter of fact, we all get a, ner a little nervous about change because, boy, something comes to change up our routine. Ooh, we get a little, mm, that don't feel right. You used to go on left, and the Spirit of God tells you to go right. Well, God, I don't want to go right. You need to learn how to go right when God says go. And that's just, that, that's just a hypothetical. Whatever direction, whatever God is telling you to do, look at it as being a God-led decision. Look at it as being an opportunity to change the direction of your life. God is not going to speak a word that's, that's going to steer you the wrong way. He's going to speak a word that's going to lead you down the right path. It's, he's going to, now, that doesn't mean that the enemy may not show up sometimes, but just as, just as I said in the text, God will remove the enemies. He will remove the obstacles from your path. And what he's trying to do, he's trying to, to trying to situate you and trying to get you to see that it is his hand, it is his power, it's his authority that makes the difference in your life. It is the one thing that will make the, make the difference. All you got to do is listen. Pastor C and I, and I think I told y'all about the song, Marvin Sapp sings a song, says listen. And uh, God ain't really trying to tell you nothing. You just need to listen. He ain't trying to do nothing. He's telling you what to do. And for many of us, we put our headphones on, literally. <laughs> and we ignore God. We tune him out. God ain't trying to tell you. You need to listen to what God is saying. Listen to a God-led decision. Because you know what? When you listen to that God-led decision, it will change your life. And I will add to it. It will change your life for the better. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that's what happened to these lepers. They got blessed by the spoils of the enemy. Right. And I just believe what God is doing now in the earth. Yeah. He is literally... He is taking, he is making some of the people who have advanced over these last several years. What he's literally going to do, he's literally going to remove some of them. And I don't know, and I'm, and I'm speaking a word of promotion for many. But what God is literally going to do, it may be for some of them, may, they, for some of them, they may need to be, uh, they may uh, uh, be retiring early. But that might be an opportunity for you, for some of you. Uh, for some, literally, God is literally just removing them by supernatural means. It's an opportunity for you to increase in your life. That's what God would do. That's what, that's what happened in the text. 
I don't know what you're looking for. I don't know what's, what, what state uh, of life that you're currently in. But I just believe that the wealth of the wicked, it is being laid up. It is being stored. It is being positioned for the righteous. Glory to God. Ain't got nothing to do with the wicked. Ain't got nothing to do with them. And God can change them. God can still save them. But God is, I, just, I feel it. God is shifting. God is rearranging some things. He's changing some things for the people of God so we can continue to advance the kingdom work that he has assigned for us to do. Hallelujah. So again, make God-led decisions. Realize that God is able to remove obstacles and hindrances. But the last observation is that uh, God will transform your trouble into a victory. God will transform your trouble into a victory. Those defeats that you have ex been experiencing, God will turn that thing around. <laughs> and he will transform your trouble into victory. Verse, verse 8 says, and when these lepers, they came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into the tent. They went into one tent. <laughs> the Bible says, then they ate and drank. And they carried from it silver and gold and clothing. What they needed, God divinely orchestrated. It was an opportunity for them to rise up from where they were. It was an opportunity to get what they needed. It was an opportunity to change their life. And the trip thing was, and, I, and this, this was uh, 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 very intriguing for me. The, the, the earlier part in the text said that they had... Oh, no, no, no. They were leprous. Right. But I went back and I had to go look at a few more translations. But it said they, they were leprous. Text says, I believe around verse 8, 7, 8, that they had leprosy. Wow. And I said, oh, wait a minute, God, you just shifted something here. Wow. They were leprous. But the word of God said they had leprosy. And what I mean by that is, I think it was in the past tense. God literally had healed them, and he was healing them as they went through the process, as, as they made a decision to rise up from where they were. They made a decision to get up from, from where they were. They made a decision, a conscious effort. And some of us need to make a conscious effort. Yeah. Make more of a conscious effort over your life. Make more of a conscious effort of, of, of changing your situation. The word of the Lord came through uh, uh, Minister Le uh, uh, Benita, and, I, I, and, it, and it witnessed to me because I was praying, and God had literally said the same thing to me early this week, and that was a confirming word, Minister Benita. He said, many of the people of God are literally, I wish I had somebody small, but I literally... You are walking around, <laughs> but how can I do it? You are literally, come here, Mariah. She look. You are literally, just get on my back. Come on. Literally, you are carrying around weights. And Mariah is about 100 and some 30 pounds, and she's starting to get heavy. You are literally around weight you're carrying around too much weight and you can't you you can't advance you can't live because otherwise you're gonna start going I can drop you <laughs> but that's what happens though you carry so much weight to Lord I can't make it Lord I, I can't go through Lord I, I can't I can't I can't but God is saying this is your time to rise up let go of the weight You can only rise up when you let go of the weight. And I don't know what that weight is for you. You know what it is. But God said it's time for you to let go of the weight and rise up to where I'm calling you. Glory to God. God's word to us on the day is that your famine is coming to an end. 
and I don't know who that word is for. I know it's for me. But God's word is that your famine is coming to an end. Just look at one person and say, your famine is coming to an end. Hallelujah. And God also said that your struggles are changing for the better. Your famine is coming to an end. But he also said your struggles are changing for the better. That means it's working for your good. Yes, it's a, it's a struggle right now. It's, it's, it's a little bit agonizing right now. But he said he's taking those struggles and he's making it work for your good because you are making a decision to rise up. Somebody say, I'm going to rise up. I'm going to rise up from where I was. And I'm going to rise up to a place called better. That's what he's trying to get you to do. He's trying to get you to a better place in your life. He's trying to get you to a better mindset. He's trying to get you to a better space in your life. And don't you know a better space will make you look better. A better space will make you act better. You'll have a better attitude. You'll have a better outlook on life. It's because God's power that's within you will give you the ability to rise up. Somebody say, I'm going to rise up. I'm going to rise up. Yes, I am. And as I rise up, as a choir sing, I'm going to win despite the trials and tribulations I'm going to win and you need to say that to yourself right now and into this week I'm going to win no matter what I'm going to win because I made a decision to rise up hallelujah yes I am God responded to their action and he, he supplied their need and I want you to know that God will he will also do he will heal you right in the middle of your famine hallelujah and that's what was happening here in the text they made a decision we got to get up out of here yeah we had leprosy we are lepers leprous but the Bible says they had leprosy. I just believe that as they kept going, as they made a God-led decision to get up from where they were, God began to heal them. He began to supply what they needed. He gave them what they needed while they were in the middle of a famine. So don't give up in the middle of your tight place. Don't give up in the middle of your troubling season. Don't give up, but stay focused on the one who gives you power. And I'm talking about the Holy Ghost power. Power to get up. Power to act right. Power to make a good decision. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And when you decide to rise up, God will turn your doubts into hope. <laughs> God will turn your fear into faith, your failures into success, and he'll turn your trouble into triumphs. That's, I'm so glad the choir sang that today, and it's still ringing in my spirit. But we will fight, and that word fight literally means we're going to contend, and contend means together contending means we're going to fight together contending means we're going to win together contending means that as we go we're going to pick up some more people hallelujah and as we contend together we're going to get strengthened we're going to get strengthened for the journey we will fight and we will win we will contend together I'm gonna get a strip of you. You 
gonna get strength for me. You gonna pray for me when I get a little down. But we gonna fight and we will win because we are rising up. We gonna rise up. Saul is calling the church to rise up, rise up in faith, rise up in the authority that I've given to you. It's time to rise up. Glory to God. I'm gonna stop. I, I, I feel another shift. And I gotta save a little bit. But it's time, this is your time to rise up. Woo. What God is literally doing, you can stand. I gotta say this last little bit, then you stand. But what God is literally doing, God is performing miracles in your life and God will perform a miracle in your life in order for you to trust him he will perform a miracle in your life in order to solidify his word his word matters his, his word gives life and it allows us to believe what he says and he will perform at the right time. <laughs> and some of you are probably saying, God, I need you now. <laughs> but he's, he's saying to some of you, it's not time yet. He said, I'm there with you. I'm in the midst. Of, mm, hallelujah. He said, I'm right in the midst of it with you. But I can't bring you out yet. And that's a tough place, I will admit. Hallelujah. But as the old song says, hold to his hand. I'm just going to close the iPad on that one. God's unchanging hand. What, are you, what else are you gonna post to, you're supposed to do? Build your hopes. I got to get up on this one. On things that are eternal. His word is eternal. His word is everlasting to everlasting through generations, through generations. He is the alpha. He is the, he's trying to get you to understand that you got to trust him no matter what. And when you really begin to trust, and you might not be there all the way yet, but when you begin to make a decision to trust the Lord, you will begin to take action in your life. You will begin to move from where you are. You will begin to rise to the place that he's calling you. And God is calling many of us to change. And I said it before, that's, that's, that's a hard thing for some. But this is your day to change. 